If you don't know this, you'll never control your blood sugar levels. In this video, I'll tell you about the five main enemies of diabetes. But why enemies? Why use that word? Because they can raise blood sugar, even if you think you're doing everything right. So it's crucial that you know these five points. I'll start with one enemy that really spikes blood sugar levels. It's one of the main ones. I see daily that people don't know about this. But now, you watching this video will learn and improve your blood sugar control. What's enemy number one? It's not knowing what net carbs are. It's not understanding the difference between sugar carbs and fiber carbs. Have you heard of this? Probably not. So what I'm about to show you will really surprise you. I've put two tables here to show you what I'm talking about. How does this work and why is it a big problem? To really understand what affects blood sugar levels, look at the last row of the table here. Labels show two bits of info, but there's a crucial third that's missing. That's why most people get it wrong. What information do we have? The first line shows total carbs and the second shows fiber. Many people don't realize that fiber is also a carbohydrate. So fiber is included in the total carb count. To find the carbs that actually impact blood sugar, just subtract fiber from total carbs. So for example, look at oats. Many people say oats are great for diabetics, but it has lots of carbs and not that much fiber. In terms of net carbs absorbed, oats have a lot. If you're diabetic, you should avoid them. Now look at the second table. I suggest taking a photo of these tables to study and learn more about diabetes. Keep them for reference, it's useful. Remember, all foods in these tables are in 100 gram portions, okay? Now look at flaxseed. Many people say, oh, Oh no, flaxseed has carbs. You can't eat flaxseed if you have diabetes. I've heard this many times, right? Saying oats are good and flaxseed is bad. But if you look here, see the total carbs. Now look at the fiber. It has a lot of fiber. So the net carbs you actually absorb are few, making flaxseed excellent for diabetics. Plus you won't use the same amount of oatmeal and flaxseed, for example. With flaxseed, you use much less and feel full quickly. Why? Because it has more fiber. The proportion and composition are much better. Now look at beans. Ever heard beans were bad and could worsen your diabetes? Watch how this myth crumbles now. Look at the total carbs in beans. Check out the fiber. See how good the ratio is. So if you're diabetic, don't fear beans. You can eat beans. Look at corn. See how corn has more carbs? Corn's starchy with less fiber. So is this ratio as good? Are you starting to get it? If you don't grasp this, controlling diabetes will be nearly impossible. Most diabetics, if not all, don't know about net carbs. Did you know about this? Probably not. Comment below and it'll change your diabetes management. Simple info that can really transform your diabetes control. There's much to learn about this topic. All right, let's proceed. Take a look at this other table here. Strawberries, cucumbers, and tomatoes are great for diabetics. Tomatoes won't raise your blood sugar levels. Why? Low carbs, high fiber, and a good overall ratio. Same goes for cucumbers. Cucumber is one of the best foods for diabetics. Now let's look at honey. Compare it to white bread. Honey has lots of carbs but little fiber. So will it raise blood sugar levels? Yes, honey will increase it significantly. Pasta, you knew about this one, right? Pasta is no surprise to anyone. Pasta and white bread are the most discussed. But many foods listed here as excellent are actually bad. And some great foods are labeled as people call them forbidden foods. You know, there's no such thing as forbidden food. I always stress this, but some foods need more attention as they can raise blood sugar levels. Other foods don't need as much moderation because they're good and won't increase your blood sugar levels. Notice I've included some fruits. Take mango, for example. Look, mango has more carbs. What about avocado? Many people say, oh, avocado has carbs too. But if you follow this tip I'm sharing, you'll see it has few, just two carbs per 100 gram serving. So it's excellent. Bananas also have more carbs, so you need to be more careful. So here's an interesting tip about a major mistake diabetics make, perhaps the biggest one. The second enemy, continuing our video, is something you need to pay more attention to, increased cortisol levels. For diabetics with high cortisol levels, doctors call this Cushing's syndrome, okay? If you have increased cortisol production, 
What does cortisol do? It raises blood sugar levels and you can't control it without addressing the root cause, the underlying cause of the problem. Why? Even with diet, good eating and exercise, excess cortisol leads to high blood sugar. But how can we suspect this increase? It's not the slight stress you feel when, say, you have a pile of dishes to wash, right? Or when you encounter something like traffic, for example, taking longer to reach your destination, you naturally experience a slight increase in cortisol levels. This increase is normal and won't cause a sustained rise in blood sugar levels. If that were the case, everyone would be diabetic, right? Here, I'm talking about excessive production, typically caused by a cortisol-producing tumor or uncontrolled use of medications like dexamethasone, hydrocortisone, prednisone, and prednisolona. Many people take these medications excessively without any control, even without a prescription, which is very dangerous. This can lead to what we call Cushing's syndrome. To clarify, let's discuss some signs and symptoms. One clear indicator is violet stretch marks, as you can see in the photo. If you have this change or know someone with large purple stretch marks like these, it strongly suggests excessive cortisol production. There are other signs and symptoms. I want you to note another objective one, proximal muscle weakness. What's that? For instance, trouble getting in and out of cars, climbing stairs, getting out of bed, hanging clothes, or even combing hair. This is in severe cases, of course. It's more than just car or stair issues. It's overall muscle weakness. Since I want this video to be concise, please take note of this. This type of weakness also requires investigating cortisol levels and these purple stretch marks. In this other photo, we can see the third major feature, centripetal obesity. What's that? Fat accumulation in the center of the body. Can you see this? The belly has a large fat buildup with visible purple stretch marks in the same photo. These are key characteristics that make us consider diabetes. If you have these signs, consult a hormone specialist for proper treatment. Otherwise, blood sugar won't drop, leading to serious consequences. Another parallel issue is high blood pressure, also hard to control with medication. The third change, very common, is an enemy of diabetes and can even cause it. Have you heard that diabetes might have specific causes? This video is crucial as it reveals often overlooked hidden factors people miss. Why doesn't my diet work? Why can't I control it? There's a reason. It's hard to solve effectively if you don't know this info. The third cause I'm mentioning, which is common, is obstructive sleep apnea. What's that? During sleep, oxygen flow stops, lowering tissue oxygen levels, which can harm your metabolic health and raise blood sugar. What are the signs? How can you tell? If you wake up feeling suffocated, it's not just a feeling. Your blood oxygen is actually low, causing this suffocation. You snore loudly. People in your house say you snore a lot. This can also indicate obstructive sleep apnea. You wake up often, use the bathroom a lot at night, wake up tired, and feel sleepy during the day. All these signs suggest you should investigate obstructive sleep apnea. Tests like positionography can diagnose it and treatment can resolve these issues. Many patients see improvements in energy, blood sugar and blood pressure after diagnosis and treatment. So if you have these symptoms, get checked to see if you have this condition. The fourth enemy that can affect blood sugar, even if you do everything right, is thyroid hormones. I want to highlight hyperthyroidism in particular. Hypothyroidism can also cause an increase, but it's usually milder and less significant. But with hyperthyroidism, when the thyroid overproduces hormones, we see a more pronounced increase, a major imbalance. For instance, someone who never had diabetes might suddenly develop it, or someone with controlled diabetes might see their levels spike significantly. So it's crucial to check thyroid function, even without the classic signs and symptoms. Why? After 60, hyperthyroidism can manifest differently as apathetic hyperthyroidism with fewer symptoms. It's more subtle and only detectable through blood tests, making routine thyroid screenings vital. So what are the signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism? 
tremors, cold sweats, weight loss, digestive changes, you might experience these, diarrhea, heart issues, increased heart rate too. But in apathetic hypothyroidism, often there's just high blood sugar and heart problems like atrial fibrillation. So with new arrhythmias, check thyroid and blood sugar. This type of disease is common in over 60S, but often goes unnoticed. It's hidden leading to missed diagnoses and serious consequences. And number five, which is crucial, I want to highlight this. There's a study showing patients with this condition took eight years to get diagnosed. Imagine that, eight years. I'll give you two practical tips to help you seek help and get diagnosed. Why? What is this rare disease we're talking about? It's excessive production of growth hormone, which adults have too. When overproduced, it causes what we call acromegaly. In the growth phase, it's gigantism. You've heard of it, but older adults can have it too. This happens and often goes undiagnosed. Think about it. Eight years of suffering without knowing why. So for growth hormone changes, I want you to note two things. The first change is joint enlargement and pain, especially in the hands and feet. So take a look at this photo here. There might be a change in the fingers. Can you see the difference? Can you spot it in the photo? I'll put two photos here to highlight this change clearly so everyone can learn. If you have this change in your hands, your fingers start to grow, same with feet. Your old shoe size doesn't fit, you need new ones. After a certain age, this isn't normal and needs investigation. Other diseases like rheumatoid arthritis can affect fingers, but increased growth hormone can also change hands and feet. Not just hands and feet, but I said I'd be specific. I want you to know this sign. Another noticeable change is increased space between teeth creating small gaps. This is also quite significant. So these are two key characteristics. There are other effects of increased growth hormone including metabolic changes like higher blood sugar which is hard to control, increased blood pressure and changes in various metabolic factors. Growth hormone has this effect of raising blood glucose. Isn't that interesting? Did you know that? If not, your like was worth it. Now I have a video suggestion for you. It's about eight serious signs of diabetes. Notice how I talked a lot about diabetes in this video. I want you to watch that video to recognize these signs. If diabetic ketoacidosis isn't caught and treated early, it can be fatal. Watching that video can help you seek help early, giving doctors time to diagnose and treat correctly. Click here to watch that video. Take care. See you next time.